Hello everyone. Welcome you all to Oral Medicine and Radiology Made Easy. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel. It is. Next, let us see what are the different periapical pathosis. Periapical lesions can be acute apical periodontitis, acute periapical abscess, chronic periapical abscess, acute exacerbation of chronic periapical abscess, chronic apical periodontitis. Under this, we have condensing osteitis, periapical granuloma, and periapical cyst. Let us understand the normal periapex. So, normal periapex has a lamina dura surrounding the root. So, here you can see it is a layer of alveolar bone that surrounds the root and it is called as lamina dura which appears more radiopaque compared to the medullary bone. And next to the tooth and before the lamina dura we have a radiolucent space which contains periodontal ligament fibers. The first condition is apical periodontitis. The patient may give a history of pain due to previous pulpitis and the associated tooth may be carious, restored or discolored due to death of pulp. After pulpitis, the infection spread from the pulp through the apical foramina into the periapical space. So, as the infectious products come out through the apical foramen and reaches the periapical space, there is inflammation of the periapical periodontal ligament. So, there is formation of inflammatory exudate in the periodontal ligament that causes tooth to be extruded by a minute amount and the bite may fall more heavily on it. So, tooth appears to be slightly out of the socket and tooth is first uncomfortable then increasingly tender even to mere touch. Hot or cold substances do not cause pain until unless there is some viable pulp remains as may be in a multi rooted tooth. So, in apical periodontitis initially they may not have severe pain but as the inflammatory exudate collection increases tooth is slightly pushed out of the socket and because of which while biting the patient may have severe pain and as it increases even to mere touch the patient will have pain. So, patient may have symptoms of pulpitis and pain on bite. On clinical examination there is pain on percussion as during percussion the tooth is pushed against the inflamed periodontal ligament. So, patient may have pain on percussion. Pulpal test is usually negative as the pulp is dead. Radiographically, there may be normal periapex or widening of periodontal ligament space, but lamina dura is intact in acute apical periodontitis. Here you can see in the initial stages, radiographic changes may not be evident even though clinically patient may have symptoms of acute apical periodontitis. So, it may show a normal periapex with a intact lamina dura and a even width of periodontal ligament space or intact lamina dura with a widened pedial space at the periapex. From acute apical periodontitis, the condition may progress to acute periapical abscess or periapical granuloma based on the virulence of the bacteria and host immunity response. So, if the virulence of bacteria is more and host immunity response is less, then the condition will progress into acute periapical abscess. If the virulence of bacteria is less and host immunity response is more, then the condition will progress into chronic apical periodontitis or periapical granuloma. So, if the virulence of bacteria is high and the host immunity response is low, it forms acute periapical abscess where the bacteria trigger acute inflammation and pus starts to form and pain becomes intense and throbbing in character. At this stage, 
soft vestibular tissues overlying the root end may become inflamed and painful to palpation. But there is no swelling while inflammation is confined within the bone. Inflammation is confined within the bone region outside you cannot see any swelling or inflammation. Unlike pulpitis, pain of apical abscess is accurately localized by the patient because periodontal ligament proprioceptors are triggered. An established abscess will usually either drain through a sinus and become chronic abscess or sometimes progress into osteomyelitis or cellulitis. So, if the pus instead of draining by forming a sinus, if it is extends along the bone marrow, it forms osteomyelitis or if it extends into the soft tissue spaces, it forms cellulitis. Usually, the pus and exudate will burrow a sinus tract to an adjacent pocket, the alveolar mucosa or skin. So, the clinical features of acute apical abscess is severe throbbing pain and tenderness, feeling of fullness and tooth elongation because of collection of pus, biting intensifies pain and making it unbearable. Similar to apical periodontitis, here also biting will intensify the pain. Patient may have fever and may feel febrile. Pain intensity increases as the pus accumulates intraboni. Due to the collection of the pus, the pressure increases and the pain intensity increases along with it. Bone resorption occurs till pus penetrates the cortical plate of the bone. As soon as the pus penetrates the cortical plate, swelling appears. As the swelling ruptures, the pus drains and the pain decreases. On the radiograph, you can see loss of lamina dura or discontinuous lamina dura at the periapex and a small radiolucency or just widened periodontal space at the peri apex with the loss of lamina dura. So, when you take a radiograph, patient may have just loss of lamina dura with a small radiolucency at the periapical region. When the abscess becomes chronic, patient will be asymptomatic. There may be intraoral small fluctuant swelling and sinus opening may be seen through which the pus is drained and pus discharge from the sinus can be observed. In the radiograph, there will be ill-defined hazy radiolucency which is bigger than what we see in acute periapical abscess. So, a large ill-defined radiolucency is seen at the periapical region. Obviously, lamina dura is lost and this type of radiolucency is suggestive of chronic periapical abscess. Another condition is phoenix abscess. Here, there is reactivation of a chronic lesion. It is also called as acute exacerbation of chronic abscess. So, symptoms are similar to acute periapical abscess, but radiographic changes are similar to chronic periapical abscess. In case the virulence of bacteria is low and host immunity is more, the condition from acute apical periodontitis turns into chronic apical periodontitis. And chronic apical periodontitis can have three types of lesions that is periapical granuloma, periapical cyst and condensing osteitis and it is purely a radiographic diagnosis. So, you cannot diagnose a case of chronic apical periodontitis on clinical examination. It is a radiographic diagnosis. So, what is periapical granuloma? It is a reparative effort secondary to chronic inflammation. There is formation of the granulation tissue at the periapical region and it is usually asymptomatic. On the radiograph, you can see loss of lamina dura and there is a well defined radiolucency at the periapex. 
as the granuloma increases in size the central cells here become devoid of nutrients and they undergo degeneration and they form the cyst so cyst is asymptomatic it may enlarge to cause a alveolar swelling and if it is secondarily infected there may be a draining sinus opening and radiographically you can see a well defined radiolucency which is usually surrounded by a sclerotic border another condition is condensing osteitis this is asymptomatic and it's a reaction by bone to chronic low grade stimulus and because of which there is more and more trabecular deposition hence it appears as a ill defined radio opacity at the peri apex now let us see the sequelae of pulpitis so the first condition we have learned is focal reversible pulpitis so from focal reversible pulpitis if not treated it progress to acute pulpitis from acute pulpitis to chronic pulpitis from chronic pulpitis it forms acute apical periodontitis so from acute peri apical periodontitis it forms acute periapical abscess which may either form cellulitis or osteomyelitis acute apical periodontitis can also turn into chronic apical periodontitis so chronic apical periodontitis can be condensing osteitis periapical granuloma acute periapical abscess may turn into chronic periapical abscess which can also turn on long term into periapical granuloma periapical granuloma as it increases in size forms the cyst so these are the various conditions that are caused as a sequelae of pulpitis here we finish all the diseases affecting the pulp and periapex with this we come to the end of second part of this video how to go ahead about diagnosing various pulpal and periapical diseases i'll be discussing in the next part of this video thank you